you know, and he endured a lot of hardship out there on the road. So it, it seems like a lot of work for very little payoff. And then it still doesn't explain why he would kill himself at the end of it. Maybe he did have a conscience after all. Yeah, well, I, I guess. Uh, I think that once you read the book, though, you'll see exactly, uh, at least a, a pretty valid reason why he did it. Mm -hmm. How do you think? Uh, how do you think uh, religious philosophy fits in with today's society and uh, members of the New Age uh, genre? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I've gotten kind of involved in a religious science church out here, mm -hmm. and uh, I have been for ten, twelve years now. And in some ways, I feel uh, more in tune with Jesus now than I did when I was in the in the more fundamentalist churches. So I think that there's a lot of people out there who want to know about uh, about Jesus, right. and about you know, it, make him into a real person instead of this sort of religious character. And that's what I try to do in this book. The Jesus in mm -hmm. my book is a, a very ordinary, even kind of a funny person. He's not, he's not uh, this sort of ethereal figure that sits on the edge of the, of the universe and just kind of makes decisions. He's, he's, uh, he, he likes to have fun. He likes to party. He likes, to, he likes his friends. He likes to, but he has a very clear mission in mind of what he's trying to accomplish, and this book will lay that out for you. But, but I think people want to hear about a different Jesus than they've been taught all their life and make their own decisions. Is it possible, Jeff, that a lot of people who are getting involved in the paranormal for one reason or another are actually trying to prove religion? I think they're trying to prove afterlife, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, I, I think that people are uh, interested in this subject uh, because they do want to know what happens after you die. And, uh, and you know, God is one part of that, but just g the general idea of you know, what happens to us is intriguing to a lot of people. And there's not a lot of people who are talking about it. And fortunately, it's a subject I love to write about. I have several manuscripts I've written um, that deal with people uh, after they die. You know, mm -hmm. what happened to them once they, once they passed on, and what experiences did they have? And, and so those are kind of the, the sort of books I want to get out there in front of people. Is there a common thread between all of these people and what happens after death? There does seem to be a, a sense uh, that, and I notice this growing uh, over time, a sense that uh, death is a positive experience, that, that people are welcomed by God. God is not out to judge them and send people to hell mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, I, I really uh, get that sense that people are beginning to understand that, that God is a, a benevolent entity and is not, uh, not against us, but is for us. And I think that's bringing a lot of comfort to people, uh, both those who are facing their own demise and who have lost uh, close family and friends. See, I find, the very, I find the Bible and several religious philosophies totally, totally confusing. For example, in the Bible you have this, this, this God, this deity, who, according to the book, created everyone created everything so no matter if you were an egyptian a roman a greek a jew you were all created by this one god making him your father and yet as a father i could not see no matter what the reason is jeff killing one of my children and when you go through the Bible, that's exactly what God does time after time after time after time. You piss him off, he kills your entire nation. You know, he Sodom and Gomorrah, bang, goodbye. The Great Flood, apparently, you know, he, he wipes out everybody and everything except two by two, Noah and his family. Crossing the, you know, what happened with Moses going into the leaving land of Egypt. The sea opens. The Israelites go through. The Egyptians come and bang, they're, you know, the water closes in, they're all dead. I have, an, I have one heck of a problem with the, with the concept of him being a good father. Well, you know, I've noticed in the Bible there's a transition going on. When you mm -hmm. start with the Old Testament, it's kind of a reflection of where people were at at the time. And God is very much of a tribal deity, and so if something positive happens, the assumption is that God, you know, blessed you. And if something negative happens, the assumption is that God is, is punishing you. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a big theme in the Old Testament. And as you get into the New Testament, you start seeing that evolve a little bit with Jesus. He starts talking about 
God is a father who, you know, who is even aware of when a, when a sparrow falls from a tree. And you start seeing a different side of God that's much more gentle, much, much sweeter. And I think that as we have evolved spiritually as a people, we begin to understand uh, these lessons that Jesus was teaching us in, in a way that we never could before. And we're, I think we're just at a point in our development mm-hmm. where we're now starting to get it, you know, get really what, what God's about, what Jesus is about. And I think that that's uh, uh, permitting people to rediscover this God that's been around for thousands of years that has really gotten kind of a bad rap and uh, make decisions about him themselves. There's a growing movement in today's society of people are saying religion has not kept up with society. It has not kept up with the growth of humanity. That in today's society, we don't need religion. And we're seeing this more and more each and every day by uh, different schools taking out biblical. You've just had an organization, uh, a... uh, an organization that that petitioned that all all uh, army, air force, navy, and marine uh, visiting centers are no longer allowed to have the Gideon's Bible in their in their rooms. You've got major hotel chains who are now saying, you know what? That's right. We're deterring people away from our hotel because there's a Bible in the show, uh, in our rooms. So here we have a group saying. Well, you know what? It's, you know, it's not. It's not supposed to be Adam and Steve. It's supposed to be Adam and Eve, and yet, look what's happening. So, do we really need religion today, or is religion a cash cow? Well, I think that you know, that religion has had a history of uh, being abusive mm-hmm. to a lot of people, and you can't get away from that. I mean, that's just the, the elephant in the room. But I do believe that for some people, that's their starting point. You know, at least they have, uh, you know, they can go into a church and they can feel a sense of the divine. And, and maybe that's where they start from. And then as they get to understand God a little better, mm-hmm. maybe they don't need it as much. Uh, they can start moving away from uh, this sort of uh, uh, ritualistic uh, understanding of God into something more real. And so I think it's a mistake to get rid of religion. I think I've seen great, it make great strides also mm-hmm. uh, in many ways. So I, I think that religion is growing up alongside of our understanding of, of God. And it has a place for people who are just looking for something, some place to start. I mean, I always tell people my 20 years in the evangelical church was where I learned my spiritual ABCs. Mm-hmm. You know, that was where I got my education. That's what led me down the road to understanding God. It wasn't really that I got it then, but I got it later. Yeah. You see, I, I believe I believe, I believe the church is not the place where you find God. I, I believe whether it's a church, whether it's a synagogue, whether it's a mosque, whatever. I believe that your belief in the Almighty starts in your heart. And if the belief isn't in the heart, no matter whether you go to the church on the corner, the little mosque on the prairie, or to the Vatican, unless it's in your heart, you're not going to find it. Oh, I completely concur. It has to have a a start somewhere. But I also realize that some people need to be sort of led along a little bit at first. And and that's maybe that's the role of the church, is just to kind of give people a little bit of taste of it so they know where to start looking. Today, with all the conflicts in the world, you've got religion against religion. And if there was only one God, why would we have this conflict all the time? Well, make no mistake, religion is not of God. Religion is man's attempt to understand God. Mm -hmm. God didn't establish these religions. We're the ones who came up with these ideas. And we've made a lot of this stuff up over the years. But I think what you're seeing now is uh, as these as these faiths interact, sometimes positively, sometimes negatively, it's all part of a plan, I believe, a bigger plan to bring people eventually out of that darkness into the light of spirituality. And it, it, it may take centuries yet to work that through, but I think it's all moving in the right direction, even though sometimes you look at the news and you think everything's gone to hell in a handbasket. Mm-hmm. 
but it, it, it really is one perspective. You can't see the whole picture because you're just seeing that one little tiny slice of it. Uh, you know, you don't see the the uh, the cooperation nowadays between the Catholic Church and the Protestant churches. I mean, at one point in history, they were mortal enemies. You know, to be a Catholic to a Protestant was the equivalent of being a devil worshiper. And nowadays, people don't have an issue marrying between faiths. And I think that that shows you that we have made some strides. Well, but look at the strides that that are not being made when it comes to the followers of Islam compared to the Catholic Church and the Anglican Church and the Christian Church and and the and the and the Jews, you know. And, and I noticed something. Well, I just want to say that sure. I noticed something that Judaism went through a period where it was very militant, mm-hmm. and then it eventually uh, it, it sort of fell out of that and then became much more of a progressive sort of religion. Christianity went through a period where it was very militant and aggressive, and then it finally came out of that. And I think Islam is going to have to do the same thing. It's going through a period right now where the, the followers are beginning to say, what do we really believe? You know, are, is this who we are? Are we really these ISIS people? Or is our faith more than that? And I think it's a necessary thing that it's going to go through. And hopefully at the end it will come out uh, good at the end. But we'll just have to go through a lot of, a lot of crap to get there. And yet experts are telling us that they're getting stronger each and every day. There are more and more converting to Islam each and every well, day. Well, there's a lot of people who are born into it, too. I mean, that mm-hmm. has one of the highest birth rates, and most yeah. most Muslims are born into the faith rather than converting. But, you know, it's, fu- it's funny. It's people, you know, the majority of, of prisoners convert to Islam. They don't convert to Christianity or Catholicism. Well, I don't know. I've never really looked at the, those studies to see I have. Where, where prisoners are going to. Yeah. But, uh, I suppose that maybe I would I would guess that because it is a very definitive faith, it's mm-hmm. these are very definite things you need to believe in. Right. I think it's easier because prisoners live in a very controlled environment. It provides structure, and so they like to have a controlled religion mm-hmm. that tells them exactly what they need to do, so they don't have to do all the guesswork. And maybe that's why that's that's where the appeal comes from. And maybe that's the appeal with the masses as well that are go- that are followers of Islam. Who knows? Exactly. It's much easier to, yeah. to be told what to believe than it is to figure out you know, what you believe on your own. And, and yet, and yet, in the Bible it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So Christianity is the same. We have a shepherd. We are sheep. We're supposed to follow unequivocally and not question the route our divine deity takes us. Well, also a way to look at the sheep, too, is that the, the shepherd protects the sheep. You know, the sheep will wander off, they'll uh-huh. fall into ravines and stuff, and, and the shepherd is there to protect them and keep them out of harm. So you can look at it as, as uh, we're just a bunch of, you know, fools that are following whatever God says, mm-hmm. or that God is there trying to protect us as best he can from ourselves as we work our way down the path. Point well taken, young man. Point well taken. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue with our guest this hour, the one and only Jeff Allen Danilik. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go bag. Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com, and author-signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com that's www.wentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com 